Hi there and welcome to the final video in my three-part buttercream piping series. In this video I'll teach you three advanced buttercream piping techniques that you can use as borders on a cake or details on a cupcake. We'll be continuing to pipe with tip number 21, so if you've missed either of the last videos covering beginner or intermediate level techniques, you may want to go back and watch those videos first. If you're new here and want to learn some amazing buttercream piping techniques to absolutely wow your family and friends, this video series is for you. So let's get started with our advanced techniques. Our first technique is the rope. We're going to hold our hand in a 45 degree angle facing the 3 o'clock position. So we're going to start on the left and move to the right. Now if you're left handed, you are going to hold your bag at a 9 o'clock position and start on the right and move to the left. We'll start by piping a shape that resembles an upside down U. Next, we tuck our tip under to touch the icing slightly and squeeze with nice even pressure as we go up and over the icing we just piped. Now let's take a look at that from another angle. Again, we're gonna hold our bag at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna start by piping that upside down U. And then again, we tuck our tip under to touch the icing slightly, squeeze, nice even pressure up and over the icing. So we tuck up and over. And we continue that process until we're done. Now that I've shown you the correct way to pipe a rope, let me show you a way that I've seen this technique done incorrectly. A lot of times I see people pipe our initial shape and then just simply pipe a wavy line underneath it to try to create a rope. Just know this is not the correct way to achieve a buttercream rope. The key to mastering this technique is making sure that you're piping up and over your previous icing each time. Before we move on to our next technique, I should mention that my piping bag is not fitted with a coupler for this video. If you want a refresher on how to prep a bag without a coupler, check out this video. Do you guys remember this one from part two? Well, our next technique is very much like it. We're actually going to mash up a rosette and a shell to create the reverse shell. This technique starts with our hand on a 45 degree angle with the bottom of the bag facing our body. As we begin to pipe, we'll create a shape that's very similar to a rosette and then we bring the tip around toward our body to pipe straight down, relax pressure and in the reverse shell in a down position. For the next reverse shell, we'll repeat the same steps, but we'll start the shell facing the opposite direction as our previous shell. Let's look at this technique from a different angle. Again, this technique starts with our hand at a 45 degree angle with the bottom of the bag facing our body. We'll pipe almost creating a rosette, but we stop and bring it straight, relax pressure, and end with the shell down. And then we repeat the technique in the opposite direction. As I pipe this technique, it reminds me a lot of the shape of a question mark. So if you think about the shape of a question mark as you're piping in the one direction and then think about that opposite for the next direction, it'll help you to focus to achieve the technique. The reverse shell requires a little bit more concentration than other techniques. So if you are not focusing, you'll end up making your reverse shells face all the same direction like this. While this is really beautiful, this is not a true reverse shell border. Now for our third and final technique, the basket weave. We're gonna be holding our hand in two different positions for this technique. First, we're gonna be at a 45 degree angle with the end of our bag facing our body for the vertical lines and for the horizontal lines, we'll hold our bag at a three o'clock position if you're right-handed, a nine o'clock position if you're left-handed. First, we're going to start by piping a vertical line. Next, we pipe horizontal lines that are double spaced, meaning that we can pipe another line that would easily fit between our first line and our second line. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we pipe our second vertical line. Again, making sure that it's not spaced too far from our first vertical line. And finally, we are going to add our next set of horizontal lines, which will now begin in the voids that we left between our previous horizontal lines. And there you have it. Creating a basket weave is as simple as repeating these steps until you're complete. Here are a few helpful tips and things to keep in mind when you're doing the basket weave technique. First, you'll want to very lightly ice your cake or cupcake in the same color icing as you're planning to do your basket weave. This is going to help you conceal gaps. Second tip, it is much easier to do this technique on the side of a round cake rather than a cake that has corners. If you are doing this technique on the side of a square or rectangular cake and your corners look a little rough, it is an excellent opportunity for you to conceal the corners with another piping technique, such as a shell or a reverse shell. Finally, it's really important for you to know that you can use other piping tips to achieve this basket weave look. All right, so we have learned so many amazing buttercream piping techniques throughout this entire series. And now it's your turn to put these skills to good use for your next get together. Tell me in the comment box below which technique was your favorite. Also, let me know if there was a certain technique you're still interested in learning that you didn't see in this series. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more tutorials, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload more great content. As always, thanks for watching.